the Omega Rangers are being hunted by Zordon and the Power Rangers for breaking Draken out of prison. So what can they do if the whole galaxy is watching for them? This is Comic Story, and I bring you audio dramas of your favorite comic books. Today we'll be covering Power Rangers 2021, Volume 2. After a short drift over, the Spectrum 2 reaches the planet of Onyx, a place where outlaws make their own rules and laws. But while Trini tries to make what repairs she can to the ship after the vampire attack, Jason and Zack teleport down to an Old West-themed town to try and look for someone who just might have the parts that they need. The pair walk into the saloon and Jason asks the barkeep if he has seen someone by the name of Frederick. Heard that he gambles here. Is he around? The barkeep says that he only gives information to paying customers, so if he ain't buying, he ain't talking. Zack then leans in, placing a few crystals on the counter, asking, How about two waters and a very large bribe? Without a thought, the barkeep points to the back corner, playing cards. Follow the bloodstains on the floor. They're from the last fellow I sent over there. Zack and Jason head over, with Fendrick piling up his earnings, asking what can Fendrick Prot do for some strapping young gentleman? Jason gives a fake name, telling him that their ship took some damage, cutting through the smuggler's belt, and they're looking for a fusion converter. Zack tells him, yeah, Captain sent them to barter. So, as Zack places a jewel on the table, Fendrick laughs, telling him that he hopes that they brought more than just a Halurian Sapphire, because that's barely a down payment. However, the gem is enough to buy their way into a friendly game. If they're brave enough, he'll give them a chance to win the converter. Zack takes a seat, sliding the gem forward. All right, deal me in. After the cards are dealt, Fendrick looks at his hand, telling him that he hopes their captain is the forgiving type. But as Zack looks through his hand, he tells him that his hand's not over yet. Fendrick laughs, asking how about one last chance to raise the stakes, all of the winnings for that pretty little bracelet of yours. Zack tells him deal, tossing his morpher into the pot, and Jason quietly yells, What are you doing? Zack whispers to not worry. He's got this. And then he turns his hand, stating that he's got a full baton of Zatar, skulls over swords. Fendrick grits his teeth and then turns over his hand. Well played, but it doesn't quite beat a Zinta. Zack looks at the card, telling him that he had four Zanabas two hands ago. And Fendrick pulls a gun. I won fair and square, any whining and I'll vaporize. But just then a knife is thrown, cutting off the arm that is holding the gun, and Fendrick asks, who did that? A woman walks up, telling him, please, you're a Vixtronian. It'll grow back. However, the rest of the Cretans here won't be so lucky. Hear me now. I am Astronima, princess of evil. As Dark Spectre's heir, all those who stand between me and my rightful prize will suffer a gruesome fate. She turns, pointing a knife at Jason and Zack, and I claim the lives of these two Power Rangers. Astronema lunges at the table, swiping, cutting part of Fendrick's coat, and suddenly dozens of cards fall out. Zack then grabs Fendrick. I knew it! You cheating alien scum, give me back my bracelet. Fendrick fumbles over his words. Easy now there. Here, consider it a gift. Zack puts on his morpher, and Jason fends off Astronema, asking if they can forget about the card shark and focus on the knife-wielding psychopath for a bit. The two quickly morph, but as they reveal themselves, everyone in the bar gets up, wanting a piece of the action. Astronema slashes at one of them, telling them that she warned them that they were hers. Jason whispers that he knows running from a fight is kinda lame, but, and Zack says that he really doesn't like the odds, he's all for a tactical retreat. The two spin around and make a break for the window, jumping through it, landing back outside. Astronema follows behind, telling them that they can't escape. Prepare to be! But at that moment, the three are suddenly locked in place by electricity as the police arrive, shouting, Freeze! SPD! Back on the ship, Trini asks if there's been any word from the guys, and Z tells her no. Jason felt that radio silence was best to keep anyone from stumbling on their location. I'm sure they're fine, however, I may have uncovered something. While running through some microcellular scans of Red Emissary's remains to identify residual particles, I may have found someone who was in contact with the Emissary. Sir Lenten Vios, a philosopher on Enduin over 16,000 years ago. He claimed to have had visions of the birth of the universe. He said that the first ones were powerful beyond measure, adrift in an endless ocean of stars. They then shaped the light of a star and from it forged three messengers, each of primary accountants so that they would then spread peace and tranquility to all. However, what comes to pass in the light also comes to pass in the dark. And these three messengers also cast long shadows of pain and chaos that would one day rise from the sea of stars and in their final days, cast the universe anew. 
Trini says that he thinks that they're the first ones, that they're the Morphin Masters, and that the messengers are the emissaries, and Z says yes. That this all started with the death of the Blue Emissary. The Imperials are their shadows. Back with the others over at the SPD Onyx Perimeter Stations, the officers sit Jason down asking what were they doing here? And where is Lord Draken? Jason asks, Draken? What are you guys talking about? One of the officers sighs and brings up a recording of Zordon informing any and all intergalactic police forces of the danger that Lord Draken poses and how the Omega Rangers have gone rogue. After that message plays, the officers state that Zordon is a good friend of the SPD, so they take what he says very seriously. You want to start telling us the truth? Jason remains quiet while the officers tell him, fine. We're going to dump you and your friend in a long-range transport back to Earth first thing in the morning. That way you can tell Zordon yourself. Back in his cell, Zack asks Astronema, Why is it that they've never met, and why is she trying to kill them? He says because they're rangers, and that's all she needs to know about them, and that she has devoted her entire life to destroying them. Zack then asks, What, did the rangers beat up your monster boyfriend or something? Suddenly, there's a snap as Astronema stands up holding a broken piece of a pipe, stating, No, the Rangers murdered my entire family. She jumps on Zack and he struggles to keep her back, managing to land a punch in her chest, separating them. But as they get ready to go back at it, a force field activates, keeping them apart, with a voice telling him, That's fine. Zack scoffs, Finally! You couldn't be any quicker? But as he sits down, he looks at Astronema, telling her that he's sorry to hear about her family. But before she comes at him again, get the facts straight. Because he has a hard time believing that she's on the side of Righteous of the name like Princess of Evil. But meanwhile, outside, a hooded man is sneaking into Spectrum 2. But before he can get very far, Draken punches him. For a big guy, you're pretty quiet. I'd ask why you're here, but this planet is more of a strike first, ask questions later kind of thing. Seeing the alarms tripped, Trini and Z rush over to help, but the man fights back. Please, wait, I didn't come here to fight! As everyone pauses, he pulls down his hood. My name is Ecliptor. I'm here because I believe that we can help each other. Ecliptor then explains the story of Astronema's upbringing and how 12 years ago, the Power Rangers arrived on her homeworld and invaded their city. While many were slaughtered, Astronema was rescued by one of Dark Spectre's noble generals and carried her to safety. But with her family gone and no one to watch her, she was placed in his care. He raised her, he guided her, and he trained her, and he molded her into the weapon that she was destined to be. And she was driven by a singular purpose. Vengeance. Trini stops. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can we go back to the part where the Power Rangers slaughtered an entire city? And Ecliptor says that Lord Draken is standing there, and she finds it hard to believe that a ranger could do something evil. Z then says that he didn't invade their ship just to tell them a story. What do you want exactly? Ecliptor says that the SPD has their friends and his apprentice. They'll be extradited tomorrow. He proposes an alliance. Draken says that of an entire planet of monsters at his disposal. You come here? This apprentice must mean a lot to you. Kliptor tells him that he can't do it alone. Plus, if Dark Spectre learns of Astronema's failure, both their lives are forfeit. Trini thinks for a moment and then turns to him. So if we help Astronema, she'll just get out and turn around and try to kill us again. But Ecliptor says that he gives them his word of honor. If they succeed, they will go their separate ways and no one has to know. Ecliptor then leaves, stating regardless of their decision, he has no intentions of abandoning her. The train will depart at dawn. Draken sits up laughing. <laughs> this is a terribly complicated situation. Follow the rules or save the universe. I pity Zordon isn't here to decide for us. The next morning, the train sets off to bring Jason, Zack, and Astronema to the station to extradite them back to Earth. But catching up behind them is Trini, Z, and Ecliptor. But Trini says, remember, no lethal force. As Trini and Ecliptor jump onto the speeding train, Ecliptor says that they need to hurry. And just as he finishes, the two arresting officers climb out, stating that they should have known that they'd send a babysitter. As the officers open fire, Ecliptor deflects all the shots, telling Trini to get to the prisoner compartment. Trini runs back to free the others, and Ecliptor clashes with one of the officers, telling him to just stand down, with all. I'm here for the child! The officer tells him that he's sorry, but he can't do that, Vorks. Get rid of their escape route! Borks turns her attention to Z, who is close by, and as she starts to shoot, she hits one of the stabilizers on the aircraft, sending Z crashing into the train. But while Z is recovering, climbing up onto the train, Trini makes her way back to the prisoner cart and hammers her way through as both Jason and Zack cheer her on for the rescue. Astronema tells them that this won't be the last time that they see her, but Trini says, actually, you're coming with. 
Just then, a door opens up as a large guard steps out. No, she is not. In fact, none of you are leaving. And look at her, breaking the law, betraying everything that the Power Rangers stand for. As he's attacked, Trini says that she promises they're on the same side. Just give her a moment to explain. But the guard presses into his attack, telling her that she doesn't need to explain. You're all just a bunch of traitors! After knocking Trini down, the guard stands back up and Jason reaches out through the laser beams, telling them to spare them the lecture. He pulls him back and slams him into the laser, repeatedly shocking him. As the guard falls, Zack says that he takes back all the horrible things he said about these bars. Back in town, Fendrick relaxes in a spa, telling one of his servants that he is in need of more bath salts, and maybe more hot water. But a voice tells them to take a look. Fendrick's soup, just like Mom used to make. Fendrick pulls the towel off of his face, and he sees Draken, and he begins to stumble over his words. Uh, Lord, Lord Draken, you're back! What brings you here? Draken dips his fingers into the water. I'd prefer not to say but you cheated a few of my friends out of a fusion converter that could get me off this planet. So I came to rectify that. Wait, those were your friends? And cheated? Why, that doesn't sound like me. <laughs> Back at the prisoner cart, Zack and Jason both put on their morphers and Zack says, So, we're really the bad guys now, huh? And Trini helps open the lock to Astronema, stating that Ecliptor is helping her free them while also freeing her. And you agreed to that? Trini opens up the lock, telling her that desperate times but I can leave you here if you want. Astronema climbs out and Jason sees the drones flying in and immediately pushes Astronema out of the way from being hit and tells her to never say that he didn't do anything for her. Zack begins to spin his comma around to deflect the oncoming shots. Man, I love these things. And then he slashes at one of the drones. Jason then jumps up, taking out the second, but as he lands, Astronema points her gun at Jason. Jason turns to her. Really? After what I just did? Fine, shoot. But you're going to have to look me in the eyes as you pull that trigger. She pauses for a moment and states, I really do hate you. And right behind him, the guard jumps out and Astronema shoots him, causing him to fall off the train. Everyone watches as the lifeless body falls and Jason asks, Why? Why did you do that? And she tells him to never say that she didn't do anything for him. Back out front, Z and Ecliptor keep the officers pinned. But once they're free and breaking out, they move back with Ecliptor breaking the chains, connecting the train, letting the officers ride off while they stay with the prison cart. As everyone meets up, Ecliptor asks Astronema if everything's alright, and she tells him that she's okay, though she was forced to dispose of an SPD agent. Zax shouts, wait, dispose? Girl, you really are on the wrong side of crazy. And Trini says that next time that they see each other, she promises she's going to finish this. Ecliptor begins to teleport the two of them away. Until that day, Rangers. And Astronema tells them, best of luck saving the universe. While everyone is still tense, Z says that he understands that they're all having a moment, but he's afraid that they must go. Once they get back to the ship, Z says the senses are clear and surprisingly, thanks to Draken, the engines are back in the green. Now the hunt for the Imperials can begin. However, Jason meets Trini telling her that it's not her fault. He would have done the exact same thing in her shoes. They're on a mission, and if he's learned anything, it's that they're going to have to stay the course no matter what. Trini asks, at what cost? That SPD agent is gone. They're gone because of our actions, because of my decisions, and nothing we do from this point will change that, Jason. Jason tells her that he knows and he's sorry, but sometimes you do the wrong thing for the right reasons. Trini tells him, you're sounding like Draken. Maybe Draken's right this time. We didn't have a choice. Trini tells him that that's what people say when they've already decided what they're going to do. They always have a choice. We can't forget that. Because knowing that is the difference between the good guys and the bad guys. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos, and if you are, please help us out. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you know when we bring you the next chapter of Power Rangers. And if you want to get early access to them, consider joining our YouTube memberships or Patreon. This channel's been going on for close to 10 years now, and it's all because of your guys' continued support. So seriously, thank you, and also let me know in the comments down below other stories you want me to cover here on Comic Story.